71 is set in 1971 in Belfast. It's essentially a chase film. It's a very simple through line. A young soldier is left behind after a riot and has to survive over 24 hours, not knowing friend from foe. When I read it for the first time round, it threw up questions to me that I'm, I'm continuously acting, asking with, you know, with news today and unfoldings and what have you, the world. It threw, it threw up questions on morality, on war, what, what war actually is and who actually benefits from war. The key insight for me was, was made when I went to Belfast. I spent a lot of time meeting people f that were active on all sides during, during that period and the families of victims from, bo from both sides. And that's when it brought it home for me, it really humanised it for me. And, and I made that key insight that, you know, all the key players at the time were 22, max. I mean, these were young boys. None of our opinions are truly formed at that stage. We're just products of our environment and our surroundings. And I, I think it was smart for Jan to, to hone in on that. You know, it, 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 it opens up another version of tragedy in and amongst all of this. I first read the screenplay, I was thinking, oh, I had names in mind, and they were in the, the actors were in their early 40s to play some parts. And then when I realised that actually, you know, the key players were 21, that, that just rocked me. And it really became the main theme. There's a character uh, fighting for the Republicans um, who's very akin to Gary, whose story is, you know, uh, identical, yet they're at either ends of a, a gun to each other. So the question there being is who is a real enemy, you know? We had a responsibility. We couldn't just exploit this painful period in people's history to make, to make a piece of genre, like an exciting, entertaining film. It, it, it couldn't be that. Everybody in it, we had to humanise everyone. Everyone had to behave. There had to be a truth and an integrity to it, even though it's working within a genre. It's working within the genre, the conventions of a chase film, if you like. We are depicting a very tender topic and uh, and with that said, you know, we, we, we owe a duty then to at least be mature about it. And so that, that's when, you know, we have to focus on the likes of Gary, you know, ground, ground level individuals who, who were just sold this, this false war again. He's thrown into a situation, he doesn't really understand what's going on, and, he, and he, he, he's in shock, he spends half the film in shock. What he sees, and I wanted the same, the same, you know, wanted to, I wanted it to be the same experience for the audience. You know, you'd be shocked, you'd be horrified, it'd be ugly. We couldn't sensationalise any of the violence. There's always a temptation as an actor to try and inform the audience too much. Whereas, you know, when you're watching it from, uh, you know, an audience perspective, you pick up on these factors that you'd otherwise assume get lost. But he understood him, he understood his mindset, and he was able to communicate what's going on in his mind, I think, at times, without saying, without saying anything. So, you know, it's difficult. It's, it, was, that was, it was very tricky making a film with, with a central character who's essentially almost in every frame, and he's passive. But, you know, it's Jack O'Connell that pulled it off. We know he's reasoning, you know. We, we know why he's trying to survive. This all doesn't need to be said. If, we, if we've got, you know, any form of competence as audience members, you know, them, them things just happen and they already serve a purpose. I think things get, get overly written a lot of the time. And that's just due to the process of something being produced on page and then transformed you know, in, into you know, real life, as it were, or make-believe. So often you find whatever's on page form is unnecessary you know, in the stood-up format. Uh, and I, you know, I'm, I'm always keen to analyse where things have been overwritten and, and perhaps where they haven't, but it did mean I felt lost a lot of time in front of the camera, not knowing the answers. And, just having to do very little, less was more. It's a taxing performance because you're asking for a very still performance and you're asking for Jack O'Connor to communicate what's going on without holding on to dialogue and being able, and you know, it's, it's a sophisticated you know, screen performance, I think, from Jack. But I hear it called a thriller. The only point I'd argue on uh, with that is that there is emotional investment in this one too, you know. The idea is we, we, we like Gary enough to care about him and we, 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 you know, we want to see him home. But he's in Belfast and he's a Brit in Catholic territory. It had to transcend just being an action film. You can't exploit this painful part in people's history just to make an action picture. Um, 
in a way it can play to those audiences because there are sequences, there are exciting sequences. It, you know, there are visceral, it's a visceral film and experiential film. And it does sort of, I think it will grab an audience and throw them around a little bit as well as pose some questions, almost under the radar.